Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Chase. This show is The Daily Creative. You know what that show is. This is where I answer your questions about the challenges you're having on your journey to become an aspiring, maybe even, maybe even, a professional creator. Casey, you get some questions queued up? Let's hear it. Hi Chase, this is Jason Teal. Jason uh, Teal. My challenge is that I've got a um, YouTube channel, I've got a Teachable account, I've got Facebook, I've got everything, I've taken out ads, but I'm still struggling to get traction with my creative endeavors. Teachable. So Teachable. I've invested a lot of time into Creative uh, Live and to all the other social networking gurus, but I really need some concrete proof and some concrete something to get traction so that I can um, just, make my dreams happen. Too. And by that meaning, uh, so I can uh, return back home to Canada. So anything that would help, um, you can check me out at learn.jasonteal, that's T-E-A-L-E dot com, and search for me on uh, Facebook and Google and all of that kind of great stuff. Thank you so much for your efforts. Love you. Take care. Jason Teal, thanks for the call, man. Um, I just I heard in there so like the, your end goal is to move to go to Canada. You can just go. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I don't. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Maybe you need to get money to get a new visa or something like that. But you sound Canadian, so uh, if that's your end all be all, then uh, I hope that you don't have to do all this stuff. Because I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm, I'm gonna call it like I see it. I'm gonna be. You got homework to do before you're gonna get to go to Canada. Um, I just pulled up your website as you're sitting here. I pulled up both Jason Teal. I figured out you have an E there and Jason Teal or learn.jasonteal.com. And I feel um, one of the reasons I love your question is because I, th I think that there's millions, as in literally millions of people, that are in the same boat that you're in. So this question is beautiful. Um, uh, what do you, did you say you have a YouTube channel? Is that right? Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Um, um, Jason Teal YouTube. I think this is going to reveal a lot here. Jason Teal, T E A L E, YouTube. Okay, why, why can't I type? YouTube. Okay, stick with me, people. Stick with me. Jason Teal, YouTube. There you are, right there. Um, okay, all right. I'm, I'm learning more. It's taken me 30 seconds, but I'm on you now, Jason. So, um, you said, you said, in my creative endeavors, and what I just, I went to your website, I can see your photographer, I went to your learn, I see you're trying to teach, I went to your YouTube, I think you're trying to teach through YouTube, and you wanna earn money, you're trying to get traction. I don't, I don't actually know what your creative endeavors are. When you say creative, and I don't think, I don't think you do either. So, when you say creative endeavors, does that mean your photography is absolutely world class? Because that's one thing that would make some people care about taking classes from you on your learn page. So what is your creative endeavor? Is your creative endeavor the teaching part? And is the, is the photography that you're showing here on your jasonteal.com site, is that just a facade to get people to buy shit? Because when I hear, I don't, I don't, hear, I don't hear clarity. And this is, again, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not jumping on your back here. I'm, I'm using you as an example. And thank you very much for volunteering but there are so many people for whom this is true. You don't actually know what you're trying to do. So what's the goal? Is your goal to become a world-class photographer? Is your goal to become a world-class teacher? Or is your goal just to make some money? And I, again, I think just trying to make some money, which it might, that might actually be at the base of what you're asking. Making money is not bad, but doing it in the way that you're trying to do it is bad because you're never gonna get there. If you're just trying to use these vehicles because you see it out there in the world that other people can make money on there, I tell you why people give other people in your shoes who have maybe more experience money is because they have mastered something. They have, they're so good at something that people look at them and say this person has something to teach. So I would give you the following homework prior to, um, you know, to going to Canada or whatever you're gonna do with the money that you make. Uh, what do you care about? What are you good at? Your, your creative endeavors, you should be to master something. And I don't think you need to be fully mastered as in like, ah, in order to teach because there's something you know, you're learning all the time. But if you want people to pay, if I'm going to your learn thing here, um, yeah, you're, you're charging money. You're charging 50 bucks a class for a tutorial. Um, and then when I look at your photography, um, there's some nice pictures, clicking in the galleries here, clicking around, buildings, um, uh, and buildings in Korea, you got travel, 
you don't, it doesn't feel focused to me. You've got a lot of different genres, so you're just, it's very generic, you're not focused, and if you're not focused, it's very hard to master something. And if you're not mastering something, who's gonna pay you to teach them? That's like fundamentally, what are you out there to do? If you're out there to make money, I think there's better ways to make money. I think waiting tables and parking cars will probably at this point provide a higher return on your investment, but it doesn't sound like that's what you want to do. So I, I hear this beautiful spark in there that you want to make a living teaching or being a part of the photography or creative communities, which is fantastic. You need to master something first because only after you've mastered it will people care. That's what you have to create, care. People care. Um, I'm, I'm going to YouTube channel now and I'm looking, okay, uh, eight subscribers, and which is, yeah, everyone's got to start somewhere. Um, view counts in the sort of the 40s, 50s. Um, I love that you're bold enough to answer this or to ask this question. You've got some playlists. I don't see any video older than a month. And this is also another thing, another reason I love your question. I'm just like peeling back the layers here and why you're very brave to share this, share, share your story with us. There are millions of people who, like you, don't have patience. And before I was ever in front of a camera, I had, I was making a full time living as a photographer. I had sunk 10 years, maybe five, 10 years, probably at least five, maybe 10 before you'd even heard my name. And that, the amount of conviction and energy, what you need to do is you need to be an authority. There are all kinds of prescriptions on how to be an authority, write some articles, but a part of it is just actually being great at a thing. I like, it. I like encouraging people to focus on being great at one thing instead of being mediocre at a bunch of others because once you have mastery of something, it's easier to become great at a bunch of other things. So what do you care about? What can you be a master at? How can you be an authority? Once you are an authority, then people may come to you to teach. Now the whole time you do need to be building your social following, but Rather than, hi, nice to meet you, I've been ph photographing for just a couple of years and I want to, you to pay me to teach, how about making actual money from your photography? That might be, a, you know, you might build a short circuit if it's the money thing. Again, I, I do believe that making money is a great thing and we should take the stigma out of asking about that as a creative, but I think you can piece together an answer that you're kind of going about it in the wrong way. So master something, be good, master something that you care about, create a community around that mastery, then if you, once you've created a community, I mean, there are all kinds of classes on Creative Live. You've said you watched them, but are you, is it like how to make an online business? Because you can do a lot of this stuff through webinars. But again, it, it all stems back, what are you great for? What are you great at? What are people gonna learn from you? What is knowledge that you have that is better and different than other people? And then when you do decide, when you've mastered that and you're teaching, don't, you need to have authority and authenticity here. Don't just stop all this stuff and then start teaching because that's what the internet is full of, a bunch of sort of B-rate, low-quality teachers selling B-rate, low-quality education. And you, I know you have a desire to not do that. So um, I think there's, 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 path, there's a path here in this advice that you can pull out. Um, and the last one is that is the patience. You've been posting to YouTube, you said you have a YouTube channel. You've been posting to YouTube for a month. I think I posted for five years before I ever, um, before, yeah, I just created an authority around the things that I knew and was passionate about. And it's also not only demonstrating knowledge, can you demonstrate asking questions and what can you do to be a part of a community? See my video, the other 50%. Um, and then be patient, do that work, and, and then community will happen. You have to intentionally do it, but only after you've checked all those boxes and only after you've really been honest with yourself about what you want, will you be able to be successful. And then the last piece of advice I'll go is, you said you were doing everything. You're, you've got a learn site, a photo site, a YouTube channel. That's also, that's really hard to do all those things well. It's it's, where's the thing that would be, um, it's, I don't know, I wanted to visually, in, this is all I got, this is not gonna illustrate the point. <laughs> um, you can't do everything all the time. What are you gonna focus on? I'm suggesting you focus on one of the three sort of buckets that I talked about first, rather than trying to do everything. And you're even talking about buying Facebook ads to drive traffic to a, a site where you're not an authority. Man, be patient, start from the beginning, 
Inherently, people are impatient, but I've said this before, I know people who landed amazing Nike campaigns are like, mm, boom, my career has arrived. And then what happens? As soon as that Nike campaign goes away, so does all the money in your bank account over time and you don't get another gig. This has happened for people I know who are insanely talented and been working at this game for years and years. So, patience, my good man, and focus. Focus on being great at one thing and then expand to the next thing. Try and do everything and be everything to everybody, you're gonna end up being nothing to nobody, which is maybe the thing you're stuck in right now. Good luck, great question, it's universal, so I appreciate you putting it out there. Uh, was that the first, yeah, that was the first question. We gotta go to question number two, because I only got, I have three minutes to answer this question. Go. Hi Chase, this is Tanya from Philadelphia. I can be found at Tanya Gale Photos on Twitter. Tanya? My question is, how do you refine what you want to focus on as a creative? In photography, everything interests me. How do mm, you... Classic. What techniques do you use to kind of refine this creative journey? It's all jumbly. But it's basically how do you how do you focus, right? Is that what she's asking about? What techniques do you do to, need to do to focus? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if every if you like everything, what's cool? That's cool. You're curious. You're open to learning. But you can't if you're always interested in all of the things. That's going to be very hard for you to go deep and learn on anything. So I would encourage you. Um, my first piece of advice would be to pursue something at some level of depth. Right now you're just sampling, which is great. But when you find something that you like. Are you compelled to, to dig deeper? Because that's what I want from you. I want you to say, gosh, you know, um, I love um, typography and I'm going to really get into typography and I'm gonna teach some classes in typography. I'm gonna attend some, sorry, attend some classes in typography. I'm gonna be a part of an online community in typography. I'm gonna just, is this my thing? I don't know. You have to go, whether you, you don't find out unless you go. And by go, I mean like dig into the community, become something more than the dilettante, something more than the super visual, superficial, like I just touched the surface. And it's then that you will know if it's for you. Does this take investment? Yes, but what it sounds like is you're being impatient. You just want, you want the thing to just hit you. Casey's nodding, you ever done that before? I've done that too, you're just like, oh, I don't know what like what kind of cuisine I want to make. I'm just yeah, I'm, and that's a terrible example. I'm gonna er, pretend I didn't say that. I don't know why I went there. Um, the Red Bull is kicking in. Ultimately, you need to experiment. You need to dive deep. You need to commit to a couple of things. And what I believe will happen, because I've prescribed this many times, is that it's in the process of diving deep that you will most likely, rather than saying like, "Whoa, this sucks. I'm out of here," what you're probably gonna do is you're probably gonna say. I don't love that aspect of this thing, but I do, I am interested in this thing, right? That's what's gonna happen. And in the process of doing that, you're going to discover yet something else, which is what you're after. That's how you're gonna find focus. You're gonna find focus by starting to do something. You're gonna realize that it's not this thing, but it's something that's slightly different. And that's what I call the path. If you're always on the path, that will create energy for you. You'll have a lot of, uh, of desire to put something into the system, put your energy, yourself, your vision into the system, um, and that will pay off in dividends. I've got one, one other piece of advice, and that is to reference a book by a friend of mine. I've already called this book out once in the show in a previous episode, but I'm gonna do it again here. It's called Born For This. Born For This. It's a book by Chris G, as in Chris Gillibo. I, I'm recommending this book. That's not Chris. Chris Six, that's Chris G. Um, and in short, it's like, what, what can you earn money at? What do you, what, what are you passionate about? What do you love? And what, it, like, what gives you flow? What comes easy to you? And it's in the center of those Venn diagrams that you'll find the answer. So do a little bit of homework, explore, go deeper, and you will find the answer. And thank you for calling in because you're not alone. There's so many people who have that questions. Right now, I'm gonna give myself a round of applause. Where's my clicker thing. Do I have a clicker thing? I got a clicker thing. What? Nope, that's my microphone. I threw it on the ground. That, this concludes another episode of this show uh, right here. If you want your question answered on the show, dial 802-962-4357. And between now and you actually making the call, subscribe. Tell some friends about it. Get introspective. Don't be nervous. I'm, and I'm, we play these calls on the, on the show here 
Um, but it's that first step, that bravery of actually putting it out there. You can't, you, you can't get answers unless you put up, put questions out there. It's, especially if you're stuck, uh, you need other people to help you solve these questions. And that's why I'm here, and that's why this show exists. So, high five! Thank you very much. <laughs>